really quick. It's going to be about 15 minutes maximum, and um, I'd like some questions from the audience as well. But I'll, I'll kick it off. Um, David, principal race officer, just tell us about. Sorry, Mark. Sorry. Tell us about the, the conditions out there as you saw them from the from the boat. Obviously, not very typical of Corpus Christi. Not what we came to expect. But what, what were you seeing in terms of the wind direction and the, the shift in the breeze? Uh, start off. 20, the puffs were coming in initially at 30, 35, and then as the wind finally sort of kept flying around, and we got over the 40, 50, then the puffs started coming back to 35. The upper winds were at 3,000 feet were 35, and so that's where all the pressure was coming from. It kind of kept going us back there. Uh, the sea breeze was fighting to get in. It's, the thermal generated, but it's not going to generate very hard today. And, you know, maybe by 5 o'clock, you might get 10 knots of breeze out there. So we were fighting that. Start of the second race, we were getting puffs, we were getting light spots over at 75 and 80, and then the puffs would come back to 35, and so it was a big swing, and then what we knew it was going to continue to try and die as, until it's generated. So. Okay, Federico, you were on the uh, Uka boat. The start line to me looked quite biased towards the committee boat, and where, where did you start? We made it two starts in the middle, I think. Yeah. Middle committee. And one of them was a little bit too forward, yeah. it was a general call, and the second one was, I think, perfect in time. So the race that got away, second start that got away, okay, what, what was your strategy of the first beat? This is the guy for the strategy. Jonathan? Uh, I really did I thought the left was going to be all right, but it, it didn't turn out very well. It was a kind of right trend of direction, for sure, and uh, that, that was it. Yeah, I saw Ivan Mallaby come fairly weak start and then bang out to the right quite hard. Is that what you guys saw? Yeah. Because you were in a coach boat, I think, were you? Yeah, you started the middle boat in and attack. It was the first boat to attack. Uh, went for quite a while, and for a while he didn't look that special, and, and towards the end I think he got a more pressure. It yeah. looks like more pressure, right? Yeah. Uh, the gain to the right was about pressure rather than about wind direction. I, I, I think it's definitely, I, I don't know, it's hard for me to see from the coach goals, but it looks like definitely more pressure. Okay. And then down the first run, um, I think the leaders came off on starboard, held on for quite a long way. Um, there were a few early drivers that I saw behind who seemed to make a bit of a gain. I think full throttle rounded first and. Uh, Full throttle, or maybe full, full throttle around the, the first quarter marking first, yeah. and then about the gauge, uh, full throttle went to the right gauge, then middle of the went to the left gauge, yeah. and they both were around about the same time. Yeah, okay, because I think I think at the top of the run, Melody jived first and actually got a bit of a jump, right. which could have been just a little bit of local pressure. But, so, Jonathan Federico, that first run. Yeah, you said it right there, local pressure. It was really hard to see. You can't really see the wind at all. And um, sometimes you were in it and sometimes you weren't. It seemed pretty random, especially the second downwind. There was just these fingers of breeze, and if you were in it, you looked great. And if you weren't, there was yeah. really not much you could do. So certainly by that, by that second downwind, the breeze was starting to die. We just go back to the, to the gate mark, and it seemed to me the bulk of the boats went to the right-hand mark as you're looking upwind. Um, and I didn't really see what happened then. Did, did people tend to stay out to the right, or did they come back across the course? Well, it appeared to me that like uh, they had a place near the shore. <coughs> yeah, it was, it was well, yeah, over there, coaching the, the hedgehog team. And, and he, he noticed the breeze like being filling up from the shore first. And, and uh, was a lot, breeze, a lot of wind near the shore, and was also breeze in the, in the left side looking down. looking down. And so the middle was a, was really a no man's land. So if you didn't go to one pressure or the other. You know? right. So the guys that kind of went to the sides all did well. So there was no pressure the guys in the middle. So there were no gains to be made in the middle of the course. Okay. Kristen's here somewhere. Is she, is she gone? It's right here. Oh, she's right here. <laughs> Kristen, you um, had a difficult start and made some gains on the first run, but you made quite a lot of gains on the second beat, I think. Well, where did you go, second beat? I'm not sure where we went. 
Um, yeah, I think you pretty much had it described. We we fought for uh, down with left mark there, came around, and uh, most of the boats stayed on port. And I'd say for the first half of the beat, the guys that were a little more to the left were sort of shearing off, but then they would always cave and it would go light again. It was kind of like the angle was a little better left, but there was gradually more pressure to the right. And so after about half the beat, people pretty much had it figured out and everyone was, you know, when they'd, when they'd get in the puff, we'd all tack and go back left towards the mark. And then when the breeze would cave and we'd fall out of the wind, and would make tacks back to the right and go to the right. And then and it was pretty much everyone was tacking in sync pretty much up that whole second beat. But over the course of that, as we got closer and closer and closer to the weather mark, then the last righty kind of won out, and the guys that were down low ended up in less wind. Okay, and then that final final run, obviously the breeze was starting to fade quite a lot then. I know, Charlie, when we spoke earlier on, you said that you were the last ones to jive, I think? Yeah, and everyone came around and jibe set, and uh, but basically we were all just sailing into less and less wind, so it was just total luck on our part. I mean, it's completely random. <laughs> okay. Um, we could all be so lucky. Um, so, just a couple of questions, Federico, about the way the boat was set up today. You guys have probably been thinking it's going to be windy. So, this regatta would probably have that in your mind, but you've had to deal with a, a fairly light air today. today. What, what did you do with the rig? It, 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 it's, it's unbelievable, and this happened many times in the past. Also, you're working all season thinking to come in corpus and fighting with 25 knots, and then days like that happen, and also yesterday. So, we are trying to be quite flexible, and we are trying to do nothing special on both. So, today we was quite soft on our way. We got some time to understand that the wind looks more than what is yeah. the reality. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know, maybe for the humidity, maybe because it's more warm compared home. So we are trying to find our setting, but we are not making that decision. So. Right, okay. So, the question for you as the uh, local guru on the weather, what, what can we expect over the next couple of days now? We're still going to fight. It's going to be almost reverse thermal. It's going to get cool tonight, so it's going to try and come back and go back to the north. And then it's going to fight tomorrow. Tomorrow, they say that there's supposed to be a better breeze all day long. It's not going to kind of cave as bad as it did today. Uh, it's sort of in the 12 to 14 knot range, is the prediction. Uh, I mean, it was nice to turn as quick as it did today. Uh, so hopefully that will mean it'll continue to turn. They're saying by Tuesday that it's going to be back in the 15 to 18 to 20 knot stuff. We're going to change the start time depending on what I see for the breeze. We'll do that every night. Uh, if we think we're going to have breeze in the morning, we'll start at 11. If we think we're going to have breeze in the afternoon, we'll maybe push it back to 1. So when the breeze does come in here, and, um, which, which it will, what are we looking at in terms of, is, is it a steady breeze? Is it a shifting breeze? That shift a lot. and it, I mean, it, it'll move from sort of 120 to 145 or from 150 to 120, but it's not its not going to bang back and forth. It's going to, in a beat, it might change by, you might find some small shifts out there, but in general, it's going to stay within five degrees of wherever the, the grade is. And a lot of that has to do with the upper air and where that's coming from. Okay, and no particular tidal influences in this boat? The only tide's wind-driven, the only current is wind-driven uh, current. The tide in the bay, if you've been here enough, fluctuates by about a foot. There's uh, really the main ship channel which goes out and then there's another factory channel which lets water in and really doesn't have a circulation pattern as you would in the San Francisco Bay. And so it doesn't have enough, there's not enough breeze right now to start the current and even if when there is a current it's about a quarter, maybe three tenths of a knot and it's consistent over the course of where you all are sailing. Okay. Any current's going to be there, it's going to be consistent from left to right, okay. up and down. All right, thanks. So Vince, um, I think you're heading home tomorrow, right? Are you here? Are you? No, okay. So let's, uh, let's ask you a couple of questions while you're here. So given a uh, 20 to 25 knot day, well, how would you be setting the boats up? Yeah. 
several guys here that know a lot better than how to set up a boat than I do. But uh, of course, yeah. <laughs> of course, is uh, uh, the, the the quick thing that people have to understand is that like a big difference from the days that I was sailing now is a lot is that the boats are sailing a lot flatter than than we used to. So the boats, the trim and the sails were hard. You see some uh, guys that have been sailing for a long time and they're still trying to a little bit harder. The trim is a little harder than, than, than some of the, the Europeans and some of the fast guys. And so it's, to me it's critical to sail the boat flat than more like a skiff, like a 470 or something. More, more of a faster boat. And, uh, and it's just to keep the speed all the time because basically you have that limited amount of gain by sailing a little higher, a little slower. But if you hit a wave, which we seem going to see that over here, if the breeze is up, there's going to be a lot of waves. So you, it's much more important to get people moving all the time. So to me, you have to kind of set the rig tight enough that to a point that you're going to have be able to ease the main sheet, to twist the main, and not have the force stay just completely just so you want to keep the rig somehow tied to be able to allow you to use the main sheet. So how much is that? If you like uh, in this regular turnbuckle, it would be probably 25, 23 some turns from the from baseline or something like that. And uh, other than that, you just like keep the boat in the speed. Yeah. Okay, that's kind of all the questions I've got.